Let's look at some modern Japanese newaza attacks. In this video we're focusing on attacks where the opponent controls the far side of their opponent's body. Look at that, she's passing a grip to her bottom hand. It's a grip of the bottom of her opponent's dogi. And the other key grip we're going to see used from here is a belt grip. So this position is what's known as an SRT. It's often called a super rolling thunder. So it's a way to turn and pin your opponents. The bottom hand reaches behind your opponent's arms, grabbing the bottom of the dogi. The other hand grabs the belt. The belt grip is used to help with turning but the bottom of the dogi grip is so useful for pinning once the turn is in place. So she is never going to release that bottom of the dogi grip. So that grip is now pulling into her opponent's right side and it's making it extremely difficult for her to bridge. You'll see the opponent attempts to bridge a few times but the bridge is virtually useless in this position. So this is Funa Tanaki. She likes to use an overhand grip from this position. I'm going to look at an example in a moment of another judoka that uh, uses a different grip. We'll watch this one one more time. So there it is, super rolling thunder. She likes to turn her opponents laterally towards their far shoulder. We'll look at some variations of the Funa Tanaki SRT a little later in this video. So the opponent's arm is initially trapped between the legs, making it even harder to escape. She does manage to free that arm from between the legs, but it's still effectively useless. If you try to bridge to the near side, if you can't get your near side elbow to the ground, then your bridge is always going to be ineffective. And you'll notice that elbow never went anywhere near the ground. Now let's look at a similar technique. This technique is called a Shiba Yama Tate Shiho Gaishi. The difference is that instead of grabbing the bottom of the dogi, she's grabbing the dogi on the far side above the belt. But it's really a very similar position. Aishishime likes to flip her opponents vertically, whereas Funatanaki likes to go to the far shoulder to get the turn. So this one is even tighter because of the underhook. So her opponent is, has attempted a few bridges, but they're basically useless. All she's doing is moving herself. She's not actually moving her opponent. And as I talked about before in the other clip, the near side elbow is nowhere near the floor. And if you can't get your elbow to the floor, the near side elbow to the floor when you do a bridge, your bridge will never be effective. And once again, Shishime is using this gi grip on the opponent's lapel. You can't see it, but it's in place. She never lets go of that grip. Here's another Funa Tanaki Super Rolling Thunder example. So she reaches across, grabs the bottom of her opponent's judo gi. She's looking to turn her over the far shoulder side. The opponent posts, but eventually as you push your opponent's body over and turn them with the belt grips, they're always going to fall. So in this case, Funa transitions through a variety of pins, finally ending up with Kesagatame. In this one, the key grips are the two lapel grips. She has Funa's lapel. Funa has her lapel. Because she's holding Funa's lapel, Funa pushes her towards her right shoulder. 
knowing that she has no way of posting because she's holding on to Funa's lapel. Now the girl's trying to catch Funa's arm, so Funa moves to the back step, half guard position, and she escapes the half guard and moves to the pin. So initially, I think she was looking for the SRT, but she realized that the opponent was not going to defend the far corner with her arm. So she just pushed her over towards the far corner. Each person has a lapel grip. The far arm is not protected, so Funa just pushes on that shoulder and moves towards it. Now the girl's trying to trap Funa's arm between her body. Funa's having trouble getting her hand free, so she switches to the back step half guard position. She tries to control initially with the belt, and now she finishes by holding onto her own lapel as she passes the guard. So I showed you a few examples of passing the backstep half guard yesterday. That was another one. You might be surprised to see what happens here. So she's trying to turn her opponent over the far shoulder, but her opponent is basing out on her elbow and, f and is flat. So in order to turn her, she has to reach to the far shoulder and pull her opponent over. And she does release the gi this time because she wants to snatch up that arm and move to a juji gatame. So I hope you found this interesting. I'm really interested in these turnover positions. So I think in the future there will be a lot of SRT Super Rolling Thunder videos on this channel. There are many variants of this technique. It's extremely popular amongst the elite Japanese women, but it's also extremely popular among Japanese junior high school and high school judo players. So you're going to see this move again and again in the future. And you're going to see lots of different variants. I've seen ways people have used this technique to transition to triangle chokes best is yet to come from the super rolling thunder technique. This will probably be the last Funa Tanaki video on this channel in a while, unless she wins gold. If she wins gold, I'll probably be back in a few days with some other fun Funa Tanaki clips. But hopefully tomorrow there will be a very long look at Uta Abe's Newaza. I'm going to be looking at her Newaza game and also comparing her technique with the technique of other elite Japanese judoka. Subscribe if you're interested in that.